people in the course of a year, and the 50 studied, he was doing pretty good. So that now layered on my memory and experience with the Kotel. Well, eventually I would return, <coughs> really with Ner Tamid. That would be the next time. And then again and again. So I've probably been to Israel about 20 times. And sometimes, depending upon my mood, yeah, it's like standing in front of a wall. And other times, it's standing in a sacred place. It's now that I've studied the history, and so much of what we learn about Moses and Abraham and all these guys who lived a long time ago, you know, you always have students who say, how do you know they really lived? I mean, come on, you know? Because they don't see it, they don't feel it. But somehow that wall got there. And somehow that wall is over 2,000 years old. So somehow that, looking at that wall, and you know that it extends all the way back to King David and beyond, you, guess what? That, that is something that emboldens faith. And so it becomes a symbol that you internalize as a source of strength of personal faith, and that's what it's done for me. And so when I go there and people give me prayers and put the prayers in the wall and, and leaders from around the world go there and, and the Jews risk their lives to protect that wall, it, it somehow makes it all come together. But now we have something that threatens to, to tear that wall down. We have controversy. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of ambivalent on this controversy. Everything I read tells me I should stand before you and jump up and down and shry. Because everything that is coming out of the reform movement right now is exactly that. And we'll talk about it. There is such rhetoric decrying the decision and decrying what, what happened in Israel, I feel like I need to join that chorus. But I can't quite do it. And part of the reason I'll share with you now, but part of the reason we'll talk about. And basically what happened was um, there has been a movement actually led by the Women of the Wall and Anat Hoffman, who is the head of the reform movement, Religious Action Center in Israel. She spoke in Las Vegas many times, and she um, spoke to our last Near Tamid group when we went to visit her. She has risked her life, her freedom, to bring a Torah to the Kotel so that women could pray there. And of course, that put her in jail, and it caused a lot of controversy, and it is a matter of great passion. For Jews in the diaspora, when we read these headlines, we go, Israel doesn't recognize who we are. They just want our money, but they don't think we're Jewish. And who are these Orthodox Haredim to tell us what we can and can't do? And so it's, it's problematic. And what the agreement was, several years in the making, and Natan Sharansky was the one who was asked to negotiate it, was that the Kotel, the iconic Kotel, would remain pretty much as it is, men on the left side, women on the right side, and then near Robinson's Arch, kind of like around the corner and to the right, there was a platform that was set up which would allow for egalitarian prayer, men and women praying together. Now, one of the reasons I'm not jumping up and down is I have been to the Kotel a lot, and I went to the left with the men, and my wife went to, to the right, and you know it was 15 minutes of our life, and I didn't feel discriminated. I really didn't. It just was the custom of the place. Just as if I went to an Orthodox synagogue, that's what I would do. I had nothing in my mind that said, you have to change for me. I, I just didn't feel like it. I felt like this is the tradition that they have. And by the way, it's not a tradition that's thousands of years old. There are pictures um, before 1948 where there was no mechitza. There was no mechitza, and men and women just came and prayed at the wall. So definitely it is something relatively new. But that's what's the status quo there. So in the egalitarian section, I did a bar mitzvah for, uh, for Matthew from our congregation, and it was great. 
and I went another time with colleagues, uh, male and female rabbis from around the United States, and we prayed there, and it was great. But it is so much around the corner and not near the iconic Kotel, I, it actually made me feel worse. And so what this agreement said that was that they were going to fix it up so it would be beautiful and that they would remove some of the barriers so that there would be an almost seamless, there would be the iconic Kotel and then the barriers would be removed so that it would be pretty obvious that they were seamlessly part of the same wall. And there would also be an entrance where everybody would go through the same entrance, which is not the case right now. Right now, the entrance is to the iconic wall, but before you go to that entrance, you can ask directions and it's over there. So they're going to move the entrance and make it nice, and you can go to the right or you can go to the left, depending upon how you want to worship. All of that could be suspended, and if that happens, it will be a tragedy. But that's the question mark. So one side says, ah, now it's not going to happen. And the others say, don't worry, it's still going to happen. And we'll talk about that as well. But the last part of the agreement was what was really frozen. They were going to have a committee made up of the Orthodox and the Reform and the Women of, of the Wall. And everybody was going to have a say. And that was ultimately the part that they all agreed to but yet the Haredim, the ultra-Orthodox, had to s renege on. And the reason they did that is power, right? They are the ones who control that religious section. And if a new committee was created, they would lose that control. They would be one voice among many. In fact, they would be outnumbered. So the status quo would disappear. And lastly, there's another concept in Judaism called Siyag Torah, which is that you build a fence around the Torah. So if this is your Torah and this is the right and the wrong, you make the rules more stringent so that way if you accidentally mess up, you haven't ultimately violated the Torah itself. And so they want to make things a little bit tougher so that no one, no tourist, no Jew, no one will mess up when they come to the Kotel and how they worship. Well, that's the situation, and we'll talk about it. And that's why this sermon is still being written. Because my emotions are so mixed, it tears me apart when, in this day and age, when support for Israel, especially among our young people, is waning, that we stand up and we have to publicly criticize Israel in a very powerful way. Because then people will look at it and say, well, why do I want to believe in that? They don't even think I'm Jewish. And that's not what's going on at all. But that's what the rhetoric says. On the other hand, if you remain silent and you say, I defer to Israel, then the rights of being a reform or conservative Jew are going to be continually squashed. And the reality in Israel is that the vast majority of people are not Orthodox. They're none. And we truly believe that Reform and Conservative Judaism have something to offer. And it's now organic to Israel. It's not a, an import of American Judaism. It is organic reform in Israel with their own rabbi, their own clergy. And that when we offer those values, they will choose that way and we will be able to offer them a Judaism that they can practice and feel a part of. Otherwise, the great irony is that they will live in Israel, but they won't necessarily practice Judaism. And they may not even feel Jewish. They will feel Israeli, but not necessarily Jewish. So that, in a nutshell, is the controversy. And there's also a second part. We may not have time to talk about it, the second part has to do with conversion, that the Orthodox will have an ironclad control of conversions in Israel. And that is no small matter, because there are hundreds of thousands of Jews from the former Soviet Union 
from Ethiopia and from many different countries who only had a father as a Jew and not a mother, and therefore, according to their standards, are not Jewish, or they have real no way of proving that they're Jewish because they came from communist countries or third world countries, and so there's no real document. And therefore, if there is not an easy way for them to convert, they're going to be told that they're not Jewish. And there they are, fulfilling their life dream, risking their life to come to Israel, and then they're being told they're not Jewish, unless they jump through all these hoops that the Orthodox say. That is not a workable plan. That is definitely a plan that will split the Jewish people in Israel. And it has all kinds of all kinds of worries for the security of Israel. So you may ask, well, Rabbi, why did Netanyahu cave? They have a government that you need a coalition. And therefore, the Haredim said, if you don't do it our way, we will withdraw. And his fear was that the government would fall. And if the government fell, then he would no longer be prime minister, and they'd have to hold new elections. So it's no small matter. It's a big, big controversy. So you can look and you can say what I say. Oy. But what I don't want you to do is to stop giving money to Israel. And I don't want you to say, that's not my Israel. It's kind of like America. You know, your presidents are going to change. There's going to be wars you don't support. There's going to be things in our society that you say, I don't want to give my money to that. And yet you can't stop being proud to be an American. You may disagree with it, but the fact that you are an American gives you the right to speak up. And the fact that we are Jews gives us the right to express our opinion to Israel. So we can be disappointed, but we can never take a step back from that love and that support. So the sermon will continue. Shabbat Shalom. I have to add a postlude because from a female point of view, I think it's important. Um, sorry. So um, I think I would agree that the mechitza, the separation, wouldn't have been a big deal. But if you've been a woman who has gone to Hakotel and you've been on the woman's side, the problem with it is the size of it. A man has no problem going close to the wall. A woman has to fight her way through a crowd, a sea of women, to touch the wall. And that's part of the issue. So I have to throw that in there because that's like... But it, the Torah also decides it's so small. It's about the size of the Torah. Right, but, and then also the, there is something very powerful, even though Robinson's Arch is far from the actual wall, it's still the wall. And being part of that bar mitzvah there, and being able to read Torah there, it was, it was cl almost cl close enough. Like it, it made my, my support for Israel stronger. So in the end, all we want is peace in Israel. So an anthem for that. One thing I believe we can all agree on is that we want peace. Indeed, as it is written in the end of the Mishnah, peace is the only container that can hold all the blessings of life together. Sha'alu shalom, Yerushalayim. Pray for peace for Jerusalem. Pray for well-being, O Jerusalem. May all those who love you be at peace. For you are a light that shines upon the world. My heart turns to you to pray for peace. Shalom, shalom, Yerushalayim, Yishleyu. Yerushalayim, 
תדבק אל לשוני לחקי אם לא לעת ירושלים על ראש שמחתי Five hundred and eighty six we rise for the Alenu. Kaddish is on 598. So we think of those who have died in recent weeks, Marsha Lewis and David Nathan. The service for David has not been set. Uh, he passed away on Friday and probably will be in, in, a, in a few weeks. We recall the yard sites of Violet Advocate Don Cleveland Arnold, Susan Bennett, Dora Bernstein, Etta Borscher, Teresa Bosick, Elona Bricker, Harold Harry Cheek, Litzy DeWall, Don Eisner, Abraham Etkin, Saul Fink, Robert Frankel, Q Knopo, Joseph Krenzman, Fanny Leon, Susan Lerner, Lou Letizia, Lena R. Like, Ethel Marcus, Michelle. Makajni Magalnik, Betsy McRitchie, Marion Milstein, Myrna Mitchell, Bernard Nathanson, Lillian Rodden, David Allen Ross, Loretta Sedicario, Dora Salmon, Dora Salmon, Herman Santer, Larry Sasso, Jean Sachs, Ann Schiller, Alvin Selnick, Aaron Shore, Leonard Spector, Jan Tenner, and Edith Winnick. If you'd like to say the name of someone who was not mentioned, please stand and say your name. So, so we think of all these and others, we rise to recite our Kaddish prayer. Yit Kadal v'yit Kadash Shemei Rabbah Vyalma divrach yurute vyamlich malchute Vachayachon vyomechon vachayed akol beit Yisrael Magala vizman kari vyamru amen Yesh me rabba mevorach leolam ome omaya Yit barach vyish tabach vyit baar vyit ramam vyit nase Vyit tadar vyit tale vyit talal shmei dekusha barichu Leila min kol birchata vishirata Tush bechata v'nechemata, dami ram b'yalma v'yamru, amen. 
Yehesh Shlomo Rabba min Shlomayu b'chayim, Aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael v'yimru, Amen. Ose Shalom b'mromav, Hu ya'ase Shalom, Aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael v'yimru, Amen. May be seated. So, we're going to miss the cantor. She's going on a trip. Do you guys know that? All right. She's either going to A, Pahrump, <laughs> B, Miami, Florida, or three, Germany. Where are you going? Pahrump. Pahrump? <laughs> you're going to, you told me you were going to Germany. I'm going to Germany. She's going to Germany. You want to tell her a little bit because you're also going to be speaking about it? Uh, yeah, so I'll be speaking about it on July 14th uh, when I get back. Um, I was called by the Los Angeles German consulate to go on a special trip with nine other Jewish clergy on the West Coast um, to tour Berlin and Munich and see Germany today and come back and show my congregation, tell my congregation that Germany is a place that we should go and visit. So I'll be meeting with um, German ambassadors, the mayor of Berlin, um, some of the officials and get to know the inside of, of Germany today and I'm, I'm excited I've never been there before. So that will be exciting. So we are moving kind of into our trip, sometimes vacation. So the one holding down the fort is Becky. All right. So uh, that is great. So during the month of July, sometimes you'll see Cantor and Becky. You'll see me and Becky. You might see Cheryl and Becky. You might see Becky all by herself. And if she's all by herself, you love her, right? Yeah. All right, because she's going to do a great job. But uh, for the most part, there should be a near tummy clergy person in the month of July. There's a few days where our, our trips away overlap, and then a neighboring colleague will, would cover. But uh, we'll, Cantor and I, we won't, well, other than tomorrow, we won't see each other for a month. I don't know how that's going to happen. Won't well, I won't survive. That's right. <laughs> so don't bring back any food from Germany that would spoil. Okay? That's right. No schnitzel, right, unless it's uncooked. Now, does anyone have a, a tell and quell at all? Something good that happened that they want to share? Well, I think someone had something good happen that she's too bashful to share. Becky, huh? do you have anything that you're especially oh, yes. proud of that you want to share with the congregation about being published? Uh, this is a piece of mine. Ose Shalom was recently... A couple months ago, actually. It was published in the oh, Ruach time. series. Yes. All right. Is that special? And we're going to sing it tonight. Oh, we're going to sing it tonight after the... Okay. So do you know how rare that is? That is something special. So we are exceptionally proud of you, Becky. That is great. And she's going to get royalties. So that's it. So, um, you know, the, she's off the family dime right there. She'll, she'll, you know, get a quarter or whatever it is a month, and that'll, that'll sustain you forever. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's great. All right, Kiddush and Motzi. Here we go. Kids, come on up. Any kids want to come up and join the cantor and join Adina?
Jose Shalom, a very special version. You, uh, were paying attention. Oh, um, hold on, we gotta get, we gotta get you and Michael. Okay. is pretty simple. I'll sing a line and you sing it back. It goes like this. Oh, say shalom, beam Roma. Let's try that. Oh, say shalom, beam Roma. Then it goes. Oh, let us sing the song of peace. Oh, let us sing the song of peace. Salam aleinu ve al koha olam. Salam aleinu ve al koha olam. And let us sing it in harmony. And let us sing it in harmony. So the whole thing sounds like this. O se shalom bim romav. O let us sing the song of peace. Salam aleinu ve al koha olam. And let us sing it in harmony. Try that. Oh, say shalom, beam Roma. Oh, let us sing a song of peace. Salam aleinu ve al koha olam. And let us sing it in harmony. Nice. So that's the chorus of the song. It comes in three times. And uh, Cantor Hutchings and I will sing the verses. Stuck in a world of a hopeless fight Living our lives filled with fright We tell our children that this is what's right And then we never sleep in peace at night So let's go on hating If that solves anything But underneath the glaring our eyes that want the same thing. Oh, say shalom, bim romav. Oh, let us sing a song of peace. Salam aleinu ve al koha olam. And let us sing it in harmony. We say sababa when they ask about our day. A phrase that means it's all okay And maybe one day it'll really be true When it doesn't matter if you're a Muslim or a Jew Salam. Oh, say shalom, be Roma Salam. Oh, let us sing the song of peace Salam aleinu ve al koha olam And let us sing it in harmony faith is strong as our will to fight but is it strong enough to open up our eyes it all starts with a change in our vocabulary learning to say brother instead of enemy oh let us sing the song of peace Shalom aleinu ve'akulam So let's go on hating If that solves anything But underneath the glaring Our eyes, they want the same thing Oh, say shalom, be Oh, 
Next week she's going to do the rap for you.